The countdown to elections has become even more exciting with new combinations emerging in Uttar Pradesh. UP with 80 Lok Sabha seats often plays decider in who forms the government at the centre and the BJP's 71 seats uh, in 2014 went a long way in cementing their historical victory. Now, traditional rivals SP and BSP have come together. The Congress is hinting at fighting all 80 seats by themselves, while the BJP says none of this matters. How do we factor in these influences uh, in what we could see in Uttar Pradesh and as a result uh, see in election 2019? To speak on this, I'm joined now by Sharad Padhan, senior journalist from Lucknow. Sandeep Shastri, national coordinator of the Lokniti Network, uh, uh, joins us from Bengaluru. And I'm also speaking today with uh, a political commentator and columnist, Nirja Chaudhary. Welcome to all of you and uh, uh, thank you for speaking with us um, um, on Bloomberg Quint. Um, uh, Nirja, I'm going to start by asking you what you make of what we're seeing in the last 48 hours, actually. Um, do you think that the Congress has been snubbed as uh, one sort of narrative which is going on by not being included in this gut pandan? Or uh, is it something that will actually work even better for SP and BSP? You know, that is what you're absolutely right. There are two opinions on that. One, of course, that had the Congress joined the Katbandan, it gives it a national look. Otherwise, SP, BSP, and even if the RLD joins uh, these two parties, which is likely, I think they're negotiating on the number of seats, even then, it remains a state alliance. But with the Congress, even though it's the junior most partner, doesn't have much of a, <clears throat> an organizational strength in UP anymore, it would give it a national kind of impact. So that is the loss. The psychological plus not having is a minus point. On the other hand, if you look at Kairana by poll, or if you look at even forget Kairana, if you look at Pulpur and uh, Gorakhpur by polls, the Congress was not with the SP and BST, they went it alone and they damaged the BJP more because they cut into uh, the upper caste vote and remember with the elevation of uh, Mr. Yogi Adityanath, uh, there is what is called Thakurwad uh, getting manifested in uh, UP as a result of which the cadres of the BSP and SP are joining hands at the ground level but even more important the brahmins who traditionally used to be with the congress and then moved to the bjp they are feeling a sense of restiveness and looking for greener pastures so <clears throat> if the congress goes it alone does it have the chance if it feels upper caste brahmin candidates to dent the BJP's vote bank. And also, you remember, in 2014, there was 7.5% vote share of the Congress. If they had gone with the BSP and SP, does a chunk of this mostly upper caste ca uh, <coughs> following shift to the BJP? Mm. I mean, those are all question marks. So that is the flip side, or that is the strat strategic part of the story, whether there is an inner understanding between the SP, BSP on the one hand, and Congress on the other. Uh, Sandeep, um, why don't you come into this? Do you think that uh, simple addition of SP and BSP vote shares like most are doing uh, is the trick uh, that both of them together would be a formidable combination for the BJP to take on? Uh, it's part of the trick, but not the only a component of the trick. Uh, looking at past electoral arithmetic is important and therefore we talk of the BSP, SP vote, Congress vote, all added together being more than the BJP vote. But let's also remember elections are about a ground level political chemistry. And this ground level chemistry has got several factors. Number one, can the SP, BSP alliance among its leaders be transferred at the local level and at the voter level? I'm talking of two different levels. The local leader level and the voter level, can that transfer actually happen? Because let's remember traditionally BSP and SP have been opponents of each other in several constituencies. Now you are asking the leaders to work together and sacrifice a seat if it's been given to the other party. You are asking the voter to do the same thing. And past record has shown while BSP is able to transfer its votes to others, Others have not been able to transfer their votes to the BSP, and this is why Mayawati has not been part of any alliance. That's one point. Point number two, 
I still feel at this stage there is a lot of saber rattling going on. Uh, the SP and GSP are trying to push the Congress to a corner to a equal lower number of demand of seats. The Congress is playing its own game. So at the end of the day, I wouldn't be surprised if in a month or two there is some broad level agreement arrived at between these parties. Because I think all of them would understand that unless they actually get together, being able to challenge the BJP would really be very difficult and tough for them. On the other hand, I think the BJP understands that this alliance would be a formidable challenge. And I would not be surprised if in the next few days or in the next few months, the BJP comes up with a strategy, comes up with a new set of uh, policy promises, possibly uses um, Ayodhya as its centerpiece for UP to try and redefine the contours of the debate in their favor. So I think you're going to see very interesting times ahead. And I don't think you really can say at this stage that anyone uh, has a decisive advantage very clearly in the coming election. Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting pr perspective. I want to go to Sharad Pradhan, who's been uh, watching UP politics for decades now and uh, knows how these leaders also function. Uh, do you think uh, uh, Mayavati and uh, Akhilesh will, at the end of the day, be able to action this alliance and the points that Sandeep made, that their, their leaders at the ground level have to work together? Well, uh, both uh, I fully endorse what uh, Neerja said and what Sandeep said. Uh, but it's a very interesting point, a very significant issue raised by Sandeep, that whether it will trickle down to the grassroots level. Yes, there are already been voices of dissent have already emerged today in the from the S SP camps against this kind of line because there's a feeling among the Yadav that Aklesh is uh, giving it too much away to Mayavati and she's the big brother. So, which is which is not something that, you know, uh, they, considering the fact that Yadavs and Dalits have been at loggerheads for for um, a decade, for centuries, you know, it's not very easily acceptable and the Yadavs are a, a, a lot with a lot of muscle power and money power. Uh, while the Dalits have been economically and uh, down socially downtrodden. So it may not, but fact of the matter is that they will still, they will still pose a major threat to the BJP because, uh, mind you, uh, whether Congress has been taken on board or not, but at the end of the day, at, uh, at the close of the elections, Congress will not be wished away. They can, it cannot be wished away. Another reason, Congress is not down in the dumps as it was in 2014. And even in 2014, if you take the record of the BSP and SP, even for that matter, even Mahavati was nowhere. She got a big zero in the 2014 election. Akhilesh had five seats, Congress had two. And if you go by the 2009 record, then 2009 Congress was ahead of both these. It got 222 seats, SP got 22, and um, BSP got 20 seats. So, you know, there has to be some uh, uh, yardstick, something has to be drawn up on the basis of some something. So now, uh, and Congress cannot be wished away, considering that the Congress is now on a revival path, particularly after the win in the three states where it has been able to form the government uh, and they yeah. are in the heartland. So, the, so what, what, happens, so, so, what know, happens in the current scenario where if the Congress fights all 80 seats between uh, SP and BSP, they also fight 78 seats and you know they're leaving to Rai Bareilly and Amethi for Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi. Do they cut into each other's votes? Let, let Shahar Pradhan take that question first. I, I, think, I, I think, Tamanna, there will be a tacit understanding between uh, this coalition and the Congress, because they will ensure, uh, fact, uh, the fact remains that neither SP nor BSP have 35 potential, 38 potential winners, nor does the Congress have even lesser number of winners on the potential winners on, the, on their table. So, you know, there will be an uh, unwritten understanding where these people, and because Congress is likely to get not only a good number of the upper caste vote, which it did in the in the last uh, by-election, the few by-elections, but it is also, mind you, an important chunk of the Muslim vote. This uh, Muslims have been looking up to the Congress, but the only reason was that the Congress was completely down in the dumps and was not in a position to present itself as a contender. Today, it, it still has to do that. 
if Congress manages to present itself, come up to the rise to the occasion, and build itself as a potential contender in the scheme of things, then uh, in certain several pockets of Uttar Pradesh, you will find Congress getting the chunk of the Muslim vote. It is not as if the entire Muslim vote is in any case going to the Samajwadi Party. So you know it is it is too simplistic so simplistic to believe that the arithmetic between the of the SP and the BSP is going to work the way it did way back in '94. Yeah, times have no, changed. No, no, absolutely. Now, I mean, nothing, nothing about this current situation is simplistic at all. But you know, just on on the part of the Muslim votes, let me come to Sandeep Shastri and ask that question again. If Congress fights all 80 seats, um, do they, in a sense, play into the hands of the BJP? Um, will, will they end up splitting uh, some of the Muslim votes and anti-BJP votes on the whole? Uh, while I agree with Sharadji's point on the anti-BJP uh, vote uh, consolidation, I would believe that at the end of the day, if the Congress were not able to have an understanding with the SP, BSP and were to contest on its own, uh, I think it will very much be to the advantage of the BJP. It will cut into the uh, impact that the non-BJP alliance can have. It will, uh, in that sense, reduce the opportunities which the anti-BJP alliance has. Uh, and let me make another point. Uh, I would be a little careful in, in bracketing an entire caste slash community as being the vote bank for a party. And especially when you're talking of the Muslim vote, let's remember in UP, the Muslim voter has been an extremely tactical voter and has looked at which party in a particular constituency, in a particular context, can best serve their interests and has gone in favor of that party. So it's not that the uh, Muslim vote has uh, gone uh, lock, stock and barrel to X party or Y party or Z party. But there has been very tactical calculations made by the community at the constituency level as to which party slash candidate can best serve their interests. So, um, so I don't think it's a very, it, it's just an equation of the Congress presence resulting in Muslim vote going their way or SP presence or BSP presence. If these, par if the non-BJP groups, the SP, BSP on the one hand and the Congress on the other were not to come together in an alliance, or were to even have a informal alliance, I think uh, it would, a formal alliance would of course definitely push the BJP on the back seat. But a informal alliance would still, uh, while working the advantage of the anti-BJP coalition, would still give some advantage to the BJP. Um, uh, Nija, at the end of the day, we're talking about arithmetic and, uh, you know, where the strongholds of all of these parties are. But this is a general election where people are also voting for which government um, will, uh, you know, t will be in power in Delhi. And in that sense, the candidate here is Narendra Modi. And on the other side, it's not too clear. Mayavati keeps saying, you know, suggesting that she wants to be, she's okay with being Prime Minister. Akhilesh has said it a couple of times. And then you have Rahul Gandhi in the fray there. Do you think that will also make a big difference? I think, uh, you know, that is the, uh, that is a very overwhelming question. Because while the BJP government has lost a lot of ground, and that's the state government also and that's very surprising considering it came to power only in 2017 but even in the urban areas when you go there a lot of people are expressing the dissatisfaction unhappiness with the yogi adityanath government but coming to your point the prime minister's own popularity still is very much there it may not be what it was in 2014 because it has been dented whether it's on farmers' issues or unemployment or Dalit issues, minorities dissatisfied, <clears throat> it has dented his image also. But his good, but the goodwill for him also remains a, a very largely intact, and that is the dichotomy in the situation. But does he make up for all the minuses that are there? The minus of Yogi Adityanath government, the minus of things not working on the farmers, the youth. Uh, Dalit front uh, is he able to do that I don't know <clears throat> so UP and with the opposition remember 
the BJP got 42 point something, 42.6, I think it was, yeah. in, from, in Uttar Pradesh in 2014. And Samajwadi Party and the, the BSP, if you add them together, and it was a very bad election for them. They put together were 42 percent, and of course, Congress 7.5 percent, and RLD also around 1 or 2 percent. <clears throat> so, in a sense, when Modi was at its peak, peak, you had these parties put together that kind of vote share. And now with some uh, erosion in the popularity, certainly large erosion in the pop popularity of the BJP government nationally, but some erosion in Modi's, his, his own popularity, where does the line get actually drawn? And I think UP is going to, <coughs> I think is a, is a huge, the coming together of this alliance is a huge setback to my mind for the BJP and UP will uh, set the tone for the national election also in terms of the campaign. <coughs> Um, you know, Sharad Pradhan, what do we make of Tejasvi Yadav's presence at the press conference today? Because um, um, his party and uh, the Congress are uh, in an alliance in the state of Bihar. Um, he wasn't um, overtly saying anything negative about Congress. He said it just matters that the BJP loses, doesn't ma matter who's in alliance. But he was welcomed by Akhilesh. The Congress doesn't seem to be too miffed with being left out of uh, this whole SP-BSP alliance. What really is going on there and what is... Um, uh, you know, RJD's role in all of this? Well, I don't see, because Mayawati doesn't have that, that kind of any meaningful presence in Bihar. But still, I think it is um, uh, Tejasvi's move to give the impression that, okay, we are, because, because Paswan, who is the Dalit leader there, is in the other camp. So he wants to give the impression that we'll have Mayawati on board. Or, you know, let's say the idea is to create a, create a, 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 a scenario that okay we have this option as well and we are for Dalits. So I think it is more of posturing at the moment. But uh, she couldn't make that kind of any, any difference which she makes in UP in, in a place like Bihar. But yes, there is no doubt that um, uh, BJP stands quite rattled. You see the manner in which they went about, the, the, it's, it's visible in the, it was visible on, on the day, uh, the, the two day convention of the BJP started in Delhi. Amit Shah spent so much time talking about the alliance, this alliance. You know, on one hand, he uh, tried to say that it was a dacosla, it was a farce. But even Narendra Modi, they all could not ignore the, if it was all if that insignificant, then why should they be talking about it? Every BJP leader, including Yogi Adityanath in UP, is busy talking about the alliance, running it down, you know, calling it all kinds of names. But, you know, the, the fact remains that BJP is quite worried and rattled as to how to tackle this. And as Sandeep pointed out, BJP may come out with, a, with, a, you know, with some action plan, with something to counter this whole thing. It would be, yeah. it would be financial, uh, doing the financial bait to, to, the, to, to the farmers and to other poor people. Even maybe direct money transfer, it's, all these things are being talked about. But, you know, these kind of things like the reservation thing. Now the reservation, 10% reservation for upper caste, uh, economically weaker, I, but, but though I don't understand how 8 lakh, somebody earning 8 lakh rupees in India is economically weak, but let's, let's set that aside. But you know, that also is aimed at wooing the upper caste, so, so that in the hope that they could counter this, these kind of things. But mind you, the, the, the lower middle class and the lower class, the economically lower class, understands that if this move comes, on the eve of the elections, it is in the intention behind it is not the yeah. well-being of these this, these classes. No, the I, idea is to get their votes. Yeah, I want to come to I want to come to one more point uh, to uh, Sandeep. Uh, the point about that this is a Lok Sabha election, so uh, people are not necessarily looking at the performance of the local government or regional parties. They're looking at uh, you know which government they will send to Delhi. And uh, secondly, at the end of the day, is this a major setback for the BJP, which they can refer you know uh, recover from? You said they will try several things, but arithmetically, is it pretty much game set and match for them? Uh, two points on this. One, this is a look by election <laughs> and uh, the record performance and the assessment of the central government and its leadership would matter. But let's also remember that Lok Sabha elections in India are not won by one, I mean ONE, one election, but 
29 different elections. Every state the issue is different. While the, the central government is the focus of discussion, is the focus of attention, there are very specific local factors that play a role in every state. And I think the fact of the SPBSP alliance in UP is a critical local factor which you have to budget into the Lok Sabha elections from UP. There is no shadow of doubt that the, uh, that the personality of the Prime Minister, the, the perception of the, I mean, the image of the Prime Minister, the public perception of the performance of the government, all that is important. Absolutely. Uh, interesting times ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Nija Chaudhary, Shar Pradhan, and of course, uh, Sandeep Shastri for joining us uh, in this discussion. The battle for 2019 is on. Uh, first strategy from Uttar Pradesh is in front of us, but this is a story which is only going to develop in the weeks to come. Uh, so keep watching the space for more on it.